Hey there! In today's video, we are going to learn how to do a simple backtest in backtesting.py, which is, of course, none other than a backtesting library made in Python. So, why should we care about doing backtests? Well, although past performance is no guarantee of future profitability, a strategy that proves itself to be profitable in the past across multiple scenarios and assets is expected to perform better than other strategies that don't. So, without any further ado, let's get started. So, in order to keep things simple, we'll just create a simple moving average crossover strategy. This strategy is one of the simplest ones available. And if you don't know how it works, let's just take a look at it before getting started. Moving average crossover. Okay, the Wikipedia article, I guess, will be helpful. So. The moving average crossover strategy works by calculating two moving averages for different time periods, say, I don't know, 5 days and 20 days. And a crossover occurs when one moving average crosses the other one. In technical analysis, this crossover is supposed to give us signals regarding the direction in which we should trade. Let's take a look at the simple chart. Simple moving average crossover and go to the images. Okay, as you can see, the one that reacts faster is the shorter one, whereas the smoother one is the longer one. And when the shorter one crosses the longer one from beneath and suddenly is greater than the longer one, a buy signal is supposed to be triggered according to technical analysis. The reverse also occurs, meaning that when the shorter one crosses the longer one from above, a short or sell signal should be triggered. Let's just test this in the code and see how it performs. Okay, the first thing we should do is actually install the required libraries that we will use today. And those are, of course, backtesting.py, which we can install by just writing pip install backtesting. Also, we'll need pandas that I guess everyone already has installed. And additionally, we are going to fetch the five, five minute bar prices uh, from Yahoo Finance. So if you don't already have it, it's pip install y finance. There you go. So once we have everything installed, let's open a fresh Jupyter notebook and get started. The first thing we should do is just import the libraries. We'll use import y finance as yf. Uh, import pandas as pd and of course backtesting from which we'll use backtest and strategy so from backtesting import backtest backtest and strategy okay once we have those installed we'll just fetch the pricing data for today's example, we are going to use the five minute price data from SPY, which will fetch like this symbol equals Yahoo Finance dot ticker open parenthesis and SPY. We also do price underscore data equals symbol dot history and the interval is going to be five minutes, 5M, and the period is going to be 60 days. And I just use 60 days because it's the maximum amount of days that we can have access to five minute data. Okay, finally, let's print the result and let's see how it looks like. Okay, so it returns a data frame with the daytime as the index and of course the open, high, low, close, volume and, and dividends and stock splits. The next step consists in creating a moving average function that we will create as follows. So define moving average and it'll take as inputs a price series and the number of periods that we want to calculate the moving average. So this is going to be none other than return pandas.series of the price array that we're going to give it 
and let's get the rolling of period periods and calculate the mean of those and that's it the next step already is uh, creating the sma cross strategy so let's do this it's going to be a class called sma cross and it will inherit the class strategy from the backtesting library okay we'll need two parameters and short which will be i don't know 10 periods long and n long which will go back say 20 periods okay and let's initialize the strategy this one's actually different from the usual init that we are used to and when writing classes in python and you can check out the documentation on backtesting.py but it's it's quite easy when we initialize the strategy we are going to calculate the following information we'll have a close data which is going to be self.data.close self.data comes from the data frame that we are going to provide the strategy the back test sorry we are also going to create the two moving averages so self dot let's call them ma short equals self dot i which is part of the back testing library and every indicator that we wrap around the self.i is going to be plotted below once we run the strategy. So it's quite useful to, to use this convention. Moving average, the close that we calculated above, and self.n short. Okay, what we did here is calculate an indicator with the function moving average that we dis defined above and we'll pass these two parameters close and the number of periods that the moving average should be calculated on we'll do the same with the ma long let's just copy and paste it long moving average close and self dot n underscore long Okay, that's the init part of our strategy. Okay, so backtesting works in sequentially calculating each period as if it were live trading. So to implement this, we have to use the next function. So let's do that. Def next self and let's start. So on each period, we are going to check if we are having a crossover. So let's do that first if self dot ma underscore short the latest one is greater than self dot ma long the latest one so when we are inside of the next function when and we try to access the latest information we we don't have actually access to the entire data frame but just until the period at which we are supposed to be as if it were live trading. Okay. So if the short one is greater than the long one, we should be supposed to place a buy order. Okay. So it's self dot buy. That's it. Otherwise, elif self dot max sorry this is not max it's ma ma short is lower than self dot ma long i don't know why i'm writing max every time the latest one then we are supposed to sell in this case, we are actually not introducing short selling, so we'll just close the position. Self.position.close. 
And before doing that, we'll have to check if we actually hold a position. So we'll do that also. If self dot position, then close it. Okay. So you actually might notice that the strategy only is supposed to trade when a crossover occurs, but we are not controlling for that. We are just checking every interval. If one is greater than the other, if the shorter one is greater than the, lo the longer one, we'll have to check if at the previous period it was the reverse. Okay. So if two periods before it was less than the longer one, then we do the other check. And if both conditions are met, then we are going to buy. The same occurs in the other direction. So we'll move that below and check if two periods behind the shorter was greater than the longer. Okay. There we go. There we go. Okay. So I'm almost certain that, that there's an error here, but let's continue and see what happens before testing the strategy. We have to instantiate it. So let's instance. Let's do that. So let's do that. BT for backtest equals backtest, which we imported here. The parameters are the following. First, the price data, price data. Did I call it that way? Yeah, that's right. The amount of cash that we will use to trade. Let's just do a round number like, I don't know, $10,000. The commission. Let's leave it at zero. As if we were trading, I don't know, with Alpaca or Robinhood. And we are not accounting for slippage, but that's okay for now. And let's also say that we are placing only exclusive orders. So there cannot be two orders simultaneously. Exclusive orders equals true. Because of the way that we designed the backtest strategy, there's no way of having more than one order at a time because we are just buying and closing positions. But just in case, let's leave that here. Now we have to do output equals backtest.run. Let's see if that works. And of course it didn't work. Let's see what happened. Okay. Position object is not callable. If self dot position, that's the problem. Okay. Let's check again. And I think it worked. Okay. Let's plot it. Backtest.plot. Okay. As we can see, it actually worked and it placed 124 trades. And it seems like the strategy was successful since the final result result is a profit of 5%. We had a maximum drawdown of only 3%. And it seems like our very simple strategy performed rather well, but let's take a look at the, but let's also take a look at the statistics. So we can access the results just by printing the output. Let's see what happens. So our strategy lasted a whooping amount of 85 days, which you might notice is greater than the 60 that I told you. But these are working days and these are calendar days. Uh, we also had a return of almost 5%. But if we take a look at the buy and hold, if we would have just bought at the first period and sold at the latest, our profit would have been greater than with this strategy, but that's okay.
but that's okay. This strategy is too simple to be profitable and it would be naive to expect something from out of it. So as you can see, using the backtesting library is actually quite easy and, and it gives some powerful optionalities that can become really handy when backtesting our strategies and testing if they are successful or not. So of course the strategy that we built today, it was not successful because it was just a simple moving average crossover. It is a good demonstration strategy to show you how the backtesting library worked. Okay, see you the next time. Thanks for watching.